I'm gonna be going a little bit fast. So I'm gonna cover articulations of the hands and the ligament. If Nicole hurt a ligament, why we would we put the position in the position that we put them in? Why would we put the end piece in flexion versus just extension, right? So I'm gonna really dive into that a lot today. So grab your pen and paper, ready to dive in. Make sure I got some markers. So this is straight from chapter one. It's so important. The anatomy and kinesiology, the movement of the hand, right? So there's some key basics. I'm actually reading through the um, seventh edition. So really when you look at the hand, so you know I'm a big drawer and I really want to encourage you guys you know, however you want to learn, whether you read it, your visual, you touch and feel, it's really important. Um, you have your longitudinal arch, and then you have your, your proximal, here's your MPs, your proximal arch, and then your distal arch. So if you take a look at your hand, and this all really comes into play because we're going to go over ligaments and stuff like that. So if you go along this, the middle finger, this is your longitudinal arch. And it goes between your metacarpal and P1, 2, and 3. It's your longitudinal arch. And then it goes over, this is your distal transverse arch. This arch crosses the MPs, distal. So at your MP, your MP and fingers is your distal. Right? And then here at your MC, your metacarpal, MC and wrist is your proximal transverse arc. And then here is your longitudinal. Now, when it comes to chapter one, and they start talking about your metacarpals, we have your metacarpals, there's five of them. I don't want you to get too bogged down in terms of its shape. Like if you look, if you look at chapter one, it's going to tell you all about like how the shape is a little got a little bump here and it's flat on this side. But and I don't want you to get really bog, boggled down with that. What the most important thing is to look at how it interacts with the following joints. So in terms of the metacarpal um, at the base by the wrist, it has articular surfaces that it can articulate better with the carpals. The third metacarpal and the second metacarpal are the largest, right? And they're your stable rays as well, right? They're the ones that are stable. They're unique because the third, the third metacarpal at the base, so I also like to use my hand, the third, the base of the third metacarpal it has a particular styloid, and all a styloid is is a bump. And that styloid on the side is able to take on greater pressure in terms of weight bearing. So when I'm reading all this, I'm saying, what do I need to know in terms of its shape, right? The articular surfaces and this and that and the other, yes. But the, th the, the third metacarpal, it's, it's got like a particular shape solely because it can take on greater weight bearing pressure at the wrist and hand. And it's also an attachment for the extensor carpi radialis brevis, right? And then the second metacarpal at the base, that's the largest. In terms of the other, of course, now you know the first one makes up the CMC, but we'll talk about that separately. So the first metacarpal base, the difference is because it's CMC, it only articulates with the trapezium. And the thumb, this bone, like, you know, normally we talk in anatomical terminology. Well, that first metacarpal is rotated about 90 degrees as compared to the other metacarpals. And of course, that CMC joint it has a concave and convex surface. And then I'm gonna go a little bit more into um, the sagittal plane. The first metacarpal, so this is metacarpal number one, right? This is a tra trapezium. The key thing to know about this is that it goes in the concave surface is oriented medial to lateral, lateral 
in the sagittal plane and convex in the coordinate plane. So it goes anterior and posterior. So essentially, you have your, your coronal plane goes into flexion and extension. That's how I write, flexion and extension. Your sagittal plane is the one that goes into abduction and adduction. Besides flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, you have opposition, and then what they call retroposition. It's important to know key terminology and words because what's going to happen is that if they ask you in a certain way, you just you have to understand what those words mean, right? So opposition also means pronation, and retroposition means supination. There was something that I read in this chapter that I didn't see in the other one, in chapter, um, in the sixth one, which is they use the word, so screen home torque was a new terminology. I had never heard of it. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but basically it's close to opposition, but it's when the thumb is in abduction and adduction and occurs with the other digits during pinch and grip that provides the bony stability. It's like one little thing that I read on there that was like really different from the other, um, from the other book. How important that is, I don't know. But basically when you go into opposition, you're putting that, that bone. So normally opposition is just to be somewhat rotated, but they're calling it something else it opposes the other digits during pinch and grip that gives it stability, right? It gives it bony stability.